It was a clear evening day of August 12, 1985, at Haneda Airport in Tokyo. Japan Airlines Flight 123 is preparing for an hour flight to Osaka. Inside the cockpit, on the captain's seat is 39 years old First Officer Sasaki Yutaka, he's on training to become a captain of Boeing 747. Flight 123 is one of his final training flights. On First Officer's seat is 49 years old Captain Takahama Masami, a former military pilot who had worked with Japan Airlines for almost 20 years. He served as training instructor for First Officer Sasaki, and the pilot handling the radio communication on this flight. Also inside the cockpit is 46 years old flight engineer Fukuda Hiroshi, who had flown with 747 since its introduction with Japan Airlines in 1970s. Today's flight will be carrying 509 passengers and 15 crews, making total of 524. Many people are going back to their hometown, for celebrate the family unity during Oban festival holiday. In order to meet up with a demand of cheap domestic air travel in Japan, Japan Airlines requested Boeing to design a high-capacity aircraft, specifically to serve domestic routes between major cities, which led to a design of Boeing 747-100SR, with lower fuel capacity and greater payload capability for short-haul operations. This plane, Juliet Alpha 8119er, had suffered from the tail strike on landing at Osaka Tommy Airport in 1978, severely damaged the rear of the aircraft which included pressure bulkhead. The Boeing technicians were sent to repair the damage on the plane's fuselage. Once it done, the aircraft returned to service for seven years without incident. Before sunset, Flight 123 lifts off from Haneda, heading south before turning right westbound for Osaka. Their cruising attitude will be all the way at 24,000 feet. Twelve minutes later, Flight 123 is nearly its cruising attitude of 24,000 feet. The flight crew began to settle from what expected to be a smooth flight. Everything was normal. Until... After hearing the explosions, the pilots notice quickly that something went wrong, they quickly check everything that might be a source of explosion, but no instruments were showing any problems. The explosions they heard, was originated at the rear of the aircraft. The tail fin had been ripped away, creating the hole at the rear galley of the cabin, and the aircraft underwent rapid decompression. Not only that, it also ripped off all four hydraulic lines, which all run through the tail fin. Without hydraulic power, all flight control surfaces are now useless. Flight 123 is now uncontrollable. The pilots have no view on the tail fin, so there's no way to find out that it was already gave away. First Officer Sasaki then quickly switches the transponder to Squawk 7700, while Captain Takahama radioed the air traffic control. Uh, okay, it's been, uh, one, two, three, uh, it just, uh, 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 Flight engineer Fukuda quickly informed Captain Takahama that all hydraulic pressures were gone dead. Knowing that there has been an explosive decompression, it has become so important that they need to get the plane to lower attitude. Because most people find difficulty to breathe above 10,000 feet, even the oxygen masks been dropped down for allowing passengers to breathe but they only store limited amount of oxygen for enough time for flight crews to make emergency descent. Without hydraulic power, the plane begins to dive, picking up speed, before lifting the nose up, putting the plane to climb. 
Then the plane lost its speed, lowing the nose, picking up speed and climbing up again repeatedly. Also in the same time, the plane begins to banking left and right several times, because there is no tail fin to control the roll of the aircraft. For several minutes after the incident began, air traffic control noticed that Flight 123 is still flying away from Haneda. Captain Takahama replied that his plane is now uncontrollable. The pilot still unable to bring the plane down to the lower attitude. They were in serious situation, the tail fin been completely blown off, all flight controls are dead. Some passengers were struggling to get some air and the hypoxia starting to kick in. The throttle controls is now only way for them to regain control of their stubborn jet. By increasing and decreasing the engines, or to applying more thrust to one side of the plane, they can command the pitch of the aircraft, or turn left and right as they want it. The effects of hypoxia begin to show as the pilot's gone unanswered to some radio transmissions. Despite of wanting to return back to Haneda, the plane still keep itself away from Tokyo. Then, air traffic control suggests Flight 123 try to land at Nagoya Airport, which just 72 miles away, but Captain still insisted that he will land at Haneda. All right, uh, you got 40, uh, 72 miles to Nagoya. Yeah, can you run to uh, Nagoya? Uh, no, 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 after over 10 minutes of flying without control, the plane still not descend low enough for passengers to safely breathe. To slow the plane down and create a little bit of drag, the crews lower the landing gears, by using the alternative system. In the next few minutes, the plane would make 360 turns to the right, causing the plane to descend rapidly to lower attitude, but above 10,000 feet. In the effort to help, the air traffic control at U.S. Yokota Air Base radios on the frequency, they also been tracking the current situation and already prepare a search and rescue team. For over 20 minutes, the crews have been battling for control of their plane and with the plane descent, the problem emerges. Japan Airlines Flight 123 is now heading north into the mountainous region, northwest of Tokyo. Realizing this, first officer requested of using the flaps to stabilize the plane, which captain ordered to extend the flap. Flight engineer begins to lower them, by using the alternative system. What happened next when the flap's been lower is, the left flap had been extended too quick, causing the imbalance of both wings, which led flight 123 to bank sharply to the right. The flight crews tried desperately to recover the dive, by quickly retracting the flaps and increase the engines into maximum power. But, it already too late. Japan Airlines Flight 123 right wing strikes on the mountain, roll over, and crashed into the ridge of Mount Takamagara in Gumma Prefecture, 70 miles northwest of Tokyo. The American search and rescue team was ready to go, but been turned down by authorities, who didn't reach the crash site until morning. Some people had survived the crash, crying, begging for help, but later succumbed to their injuries leaving only four survivors, who been rescued later.
The final report put blamed on incorrectly repair of pressure bulkhead from seven years ago, which should use single continuous splice plate with three rows of rivets to reinforce the damaged bulkhead. But the repair crews using two splice plates instead, to parallel to the stress crack, which not strength the bulkhead enough as it should have been. With the repeat cycle of takeoff and landing, every pressurization cycles during normal flight. That pressure bulkhead, become weaker and weaker, until it finally gave away, causing the explosive decompression. Then, high pressure air become trapped inside the rear section with low air pressure, it pushed with so much force that it blew off the tail fin, resulting of loss of control. Japan Airlines Flight 123, to this day, remained as the worst single aircraft disaster of aviation history. Thank you for watching, and, stay safe.